to ask the Scottish Government what it's doing to attract more working age people from the rest of the UK to come and live, work and pay tax in Scotland. Minister Emma Roddick. Thank you, Presiding Officer. We will continue to take action across government and with partners to promote Scotland as a career destination, highlighting the breadth of job opportunities available across Scotland. Now, the things that set Scotland apart from the rest of the UK, such as free prescriptions and access to a world-class education system, show Scotland is a welcoming, inclusive and diverse society. As part of this approach, in 2024, the Scottish Government will launch a talent attraction and migration service to help attract, relocate and settle working age people and their families in Scotland, including people currently living across the rest of the UK. Ivan McKee. Scotland already benefits from more working age people coming to live and work here from the rest of the UK than move in the opposite direction. A modest 20 per cent increase in people moving to Scotland uh, for higher rate taxpayers has the potential to raise an additional £1 billion in income tax revenues over the course of a parliament. So can I ask what work the Scottish Government is proactively doing to attract more working age people from the rest of the UK and what results this work has delivered so far? Minister. Thank you. The member is right to, to point out the economic impact and benefit of, of having more working age people and employers are helping us to develop the talent attraction and migration service to ensure that the service can support businesses to attract those workers with the skills that are needed from out with Scotland. Our Addressing Depopulation Action Plan also outlines support for local communities and economies to be sustainable, including attracting the skills and people that are needed. And evidence shows that those who choose Scotland as their home do help to grow our economy, increase productivity and innovation, address skill shortages and contribute positively to communities, culture and public services. But as already stated, the unique benefits of living in Scotland do set us apart from the rest of the UK. Thank you. A number of supplementaries. First, Pam Gozo. Thank you, presiding officer. Any understanding of the Laffer curve seems to escape the SNP front benches. Rather than increasing the number of taxpayers, the SNP seem hell-bent on sending them away in what has been termed the tartan exodus. One of the main deterrents to living and working in Scotland is the widening tax gap, which is also likely to impede the economic growth needed to deliver public services. When taxpayers inevitably leave how does the Minister intend to protect spending on public services? Minister. So investment in public services, as the member says, is crucial. And that is exactly what we are doing with our progressive tax system, which asks those on the higher earning scale to pay a little bit more back into the public purse to allow us to provide the types of services that will encourage people to live and work in Scotland. Now, I think people will choose where to live based on many factors, not simply their tax bracket. Um, and I hope that the offer that we've been putting forward to people, as I've outlined in my answers to Ivan McKee, will encourage those people with the skills that we need to make their lives in Scotland. Willie Rennie. I'm genuinely puzzled. Net migration to the UK was at 750,000 last year, but the population in Scotland is projected to decline so why does the minister think we're not managing to attract more of those 750,000 people? Minister. I've been clear, presiding officer, um, throughout all engagements in the chamber on the, the topic of migration, that the UK's migration system does not work for Scotland. So the fact that people are not managing to move to Scotland, that they are not seeing through the routes that they're able to take to come to the UK, the unique offer that Scotland has for them, is a symptom of that issue. Now, that's an issue that we are proposing a range of things to change, uh, including the talent attraction and migration system, which will allow people to be matched to uh, highly skilled jobs that they're able to take up in Scotland, but also proposing to the UK government that, for example, asylum seekers are allowed the right to work in Scotland and that the offers that are here for, for people in Scotland are communicated properly to those who are seeking a, a place that they can contribute positively to communities. And John Swinney. President Officer, can I warmly congratulate the Minister on the, the work that she's doing in relation to tackling the question of depopulation in parts of Scotland? And I think it gets to the heart of being part of a government that acts in the interests of the whole of the country. 
Will the Minister commit to work with other colleagues in diff with different responsibilities to ensure that we link the work on tackling depopulation to the work on economic opportunity to make sure that in some of the more isolated and remote areas of Scotland we are able to create a growing population based on good, strong economic opportunities? Minister. Yes, absolutely. Um, an exciting part of the work on addressing depopulation is the fact that it involves every portfolio across government. So I will be working with ministers with all responsibilities because we know that the drivers of depopulation and the ways that we can attract and retain people to those areas which are suffering depopulation is touches on every single area of government. So I will be working with those on the economy, on transport, on housing, on environment, um, to make sure that we are allowing people that empowerment to remain in the communities that they grew up in, to take up skilled work in areas that are suffering depopulation, and to rebalance our population and ensure that public services can be sustainable no matter where they are. 